Guys, today I'm going to show you simple tips for you to be a better mouse and keyboard player almost instantly. A lot of people overcomplicate things, their brain gets overwhelmed, and they don't really know what to do and what to hone in on in order to be a better player. But all in all, it's relatively simple. I'm going to lay it out to you guys in an easy step-by-step -step guide so you guys can go out there, get some reps in, get some practice in, figure out what's best for you, and go on a slaying rampage. But without any further ado, there's two things I want you guys to pay attention to. We're gonna start with the keyboard, but I wanna go ahead and throw in the mouse and keyboard combo. So you have a keyboard over here. This is just a basic keyboard with no arrow keys, no delete. This section is basically removed. And then of course you have the longer keyboards where you have the one, two, three, you have the number pad and all that other stuff, right? The reason I don't have that number pad is one, this is a gaming keyboard. Two, the purpose of it is because of the DPI I play at, which is 800 and we'll get into DPI and sensitivity later, my movement, is this. This is literally my full range of motion. I like to have this entire desk area completely clear. So I say all to say, guys, when it comes to keyboards, make sure you're paying attention to how big your desk is. Mine's 80 inches long and I'm still feeling like I don't have enough space. So pay attention to how long your desk is, how much space you have to actually utilize the mouse and keyboard, what sensitivity, what DPI, and again, we'll get into that. Um, and that will all dictate what kind of keyboard, what size you're allowed to have. You can have whatever you want, but what it's recommended, of course, will be TKL or even the 70% keyboards. All right, let's talk about keyboard placement and how I like to have it. So a lot of people, when they first start mouse and keyboard, they pretend they're typing, all right? They, they make the keyboard parallel to their desk and they sit here and it's in typing position. But that is one of the worst things you can possibly do as a gamer, in my opinion, because of the pinky. Now, the pinky is a very important thing for you guys to develop some kind of flexibility, some kind of muscle memory in order to use because the pinky will dictate a lot. It's your caps lock, it's your shift, it's your control, and some people it's your Z. So if you guys are utilizing your pinky and I highly recommend you try your best to somehow do that, then I would tell you guys to cant your keyboard. Now, what I like to do is just get my arm comfortable, however I'm gonna have it, and then I take the keyboard and I put it where my W key, and I, and I line up the W key with my middle finger. And then I'll cant it a little bit more to where the edge of the keyboard is by my thumb. The reason for this is because I'm gonna need space. I'm a Warzone player. I wanna hit the space bar a lot to jump and things like that, so that's why I do that. Now look at my pinky. This is the most important part of canning your keyboard. Look at my pinky. The resting position's on the shift button. The great thing about that is it's a small flex in order to go to control, very easy. As opposed to it being straight, of course, your resting position being your pinky's a little bit between the shift and the caps lock, so it's a bigger flex. Notice the difference in order to hit the control button, right? So again, this is how I like to do it. Now, some people like Symphony turn this shit all the way sideways, do whatever you want, but I highly recommend just cant it to some form or fa fashion. Do not leave the keyboard parallel to your desk. Tip number two with keyboard guys, because keyboard seems to be people's biggest issue. The goal is to always have your fingers on WASD. Of course, you can't always have all three there, but you always wanna to try to develop the skill to have two fingers on the movement keys at any point in time. For instance, I'm a Warzone player. I always have my middle finger on W no matter what, and if I need to hit E, my index finger flexes. If I need to reload, my index finger. If I need to hit F to open doors or loot, index fingers. Um, if you guys utilize G for grenade, that's fine. That's up to you guys, but I have my E and my Q for that. My Q is my tactical, my E is my lethal. When it comes to C, X, and Z, you guys can utilize these keys if you want. I don't actually utilize Z and X at all. I replaced a lot of my keys and just unbound them. Um, I will utilize C, of course, for crouch or slide and V for melee. That's just my preferred melee key. I very rarely melee, melee and when I do, of course, I don't need to jump. I'm just gonna flex the thumb from space to V. Now, there are some people that use caps lock for map. There are some people that use M for map. And I know I said I wanted to keep all my keys over here. However, again, when it comes to M, I will utilize the M for map because the worst thing you wanna do is when you're sidestepping, you accidentally fat finger your map key and all of a sudden, mid fight, when you're trying to get some movement, your map pulls up. So I actually unbound my caps lock completely and of course, tab is usually my inventory system. So again, all my keys when it comes to gameplay and movement will be in this realm here. When it comes to just pulling up the map simply, just a simple movement of the thumb. Very easy, very simplistic. And again, do not utilize any of that. Now a lot of you guys are like, cool, that's the key binds. Now how do I get better at this? Well, again, to get better at something you need to put in the reps you need to get the muscle memory developed you need to get the basically the coordination to never look at the keyboards people always ask me savage what key binds do you use for this or that and i physically have to go in my settings and look it up because i don't remember all right guys what i'm gonna do right now is just demonstrate to you guys movement honestly um so you, what you have to remember is your mouse will always guide the direction you want to look 
the hardest thing for players when they first switch here is they don't have the coordination to know if moving that actually moves them forward. Now don't focus on aim, I'm sure as hell not. I want you guys to focus on just the simple keys and how I'm able to just work it. And again, just by muscle memory, I'm not thinking about the keys that I'm hitting. I just know if I wanna look this way, if I wanna look that way, I've gotta utilize my knowledge in my reps to actually get the job done. And again, I'm not trying to showcase any skill. I just want you guys to see what my fingers are doing and the fact that I'm not even looking at my keyboard, not even for a second. And when you first start, you will look at your keyboard. When I first started mouse and key, it was a long struggle. It took me a very long time to actually figure it out. Um, but again, the more you play, the better you will get. You just gotta stick with it. And again, notice the pinky movement. That's gonna be the most important one. Control is gonna be my dolphin dive, of course, which you don't hit too much. And honestly, if you notice, I kind of just have my pinky on shift in order to start the sprint and if i want to dive i just kind of lay my entire pinky down i didn't really realize that until i started playing and focusing on it again just kind of uh not realizing exactly what buttons you're hitting i think a lot of people overthink the entire mouse and keyboard world i think the hardest thing to learn is actually aiming tracking snapping now this can be a perfect segue over to mouse and you guys look at my mouse over here um we'll do go over things like sensitivity dpi what they mean how they affect your gameplay um the pros and cons to both we'll talk about different mice type we'll talk about different types of skates different mouse pads things like that because every little thing of course is going to be pr personal preference but they all do have a positive or a negative effect against your gameplay as you're learning. So when it comes to sense, guys, again, 400 and 800 and maybe even 1200 is a good place to start. For me, I used to game on like 3200. It was ridiculous. I got pretty good, but I realized there was a, a limit to my ceiling of improvement. Eventually, I just wasn't as good of a player as I wanted to be and I wasn't getting any better. So what I ended up doing was lowering my DPI. DPI stands for dots per inch and it's a measure of the resolution or clarity of a digital image, particularly in context of printing or displaying it on a screen, AKA gaming. So basically without getting too technical, DPI, if you raise your DPI, go from, let's say you're on 800, you go to 3200 like I was, it's gonna be, you're gonna be going from this kind of movement to this and it's gonna do the exact same. If you're on 3200 DPI, this, will be the exact same as this if you're on 800. So it's a lot less range of motion. A lot of people jump into mouse and keyboard thinking, well, I don't wanna to have to move my arm that much. I wanna be able to do this. That's what I did at least. But the bad thing about that is again, you have to be more precise. Any micro movement at all will throw your aim off completely. A lot of pro gamers run on 400 or 800 DPI. I run on 800 DPI, I tried on 400 and it was a lot more precise. I was a lot better gamer, but it got exhausting because you have to flick in order to even do a 180. I'm gonna give you a demonstration of DPI and how it affects your gameplay to the best of my ability. It's really hard for me to put it in words. So I figured I'm just gonna show you guys cause it's gonna be a lot, hopefully just a better learning experience. Right now I'm on 800 DPI. It's what I prefer, it's what I've practiced. I feel like it gives me a good balance of movement with the same balance of precision. And that's really kind of the goal in gaming. You wanna be able to maintain movement and precision at the same time. Too strict of a DPI and sensitivity, your movement's gonna be hindered. You may be precise, but your movement will be hindered and your arm will get fatigued a lot faster because you're just doing a lot of motion. So, for instance, 800 DPI right now. I want you guys to pay attention. I'm gonna shoot from here to here to here. Now I want you guys to look at my hand, right? That's it, that's all the motion it requires. Not much, not much at all. Now let's go ahead and change it to 400 DPI. All right, so when you change it to 400 DPI, it's not gonna be much difference, but you'll notice there's a lot more motion required. Now the good thing about 400 DPI is again, when you're tracking a target, it's gonna be a lot smoother. Let's go ahead and change it to 1600 DPI and really kind of give you a better understanding. So realistically, Look at the motion again. Oh God. So when you're going from here to here, it's very, very, very minuscule. You can barely see my hand move, right? The problem in my opinion with this that a lot of players like myself have is when you're tracking a target, it's hard to keep, it's hard to keep tracking straight. Notice any kind of vibration on the desk, if your hands are shaky, um, any micro movement. You can, I bet you can't even tell my mouse moving right now. Can you? Look, look at the camera. It's live. Any small movement, any inaccuracy with the track is gonna put you off target. You can develop it. Again, I used to play on 3200, so it is a possibility, but I recommend starting out guys 400 to 800 
and then you can kind of up it. Now, what's the benefit of higher uh, DPI? Movement, your movement, man. It's a lot less motion with the mouse in order to literally do 360s, 180s, whatever you guys want to do. And this is literally gonna be a sensitivity and DPI example all in one because sensitivity literally does the exact same thing. The lower the sense, the lower the DPI means more precision, better accuracy, but on the flip side and the bad side, a lot more movement. My sense. So right now I'm at 3.87. Let's crank this beast to 10. Now remember, I'm still on 800 DPI, which is my standard. Now again, same situation. Let's go to one. Now notice how much I have to move my mouse just to turn. Now I wanna show you guys these examples because instead of giving you the scientific definition, which confused the crap out of me, I wanted to give it to you in a more simplistic terms that helped me learn and understand sensitivity and DPI a lot easier. So all you guys out there that are super technical and like, that's not what, that's not why I'm doing this. The reason why I gave this example is again, to make it an easier learning experience for a lot of people. Now let's talk about mice real quick. This is not a sponsored video and I have several different mice on my desk. So you can guys, you guys can choose whichever one you want. But there are different types of grip. There's palm grip where your entire hand's resting on it. There's claw grip. There's a lot of different things. Just find the grip that's worth for you. If you notice this mouse right here, it's not symmetrical. The right hand side kind of concaves outward and that's exactly how I like it. I can't stand mice that are symmetrical, meaning the right hand side looks like the left. So basically let's flip the mouse upside down. If my pinky goes on this, it's very awkward it's very awkward for my pinky to hold it. I like my pinky to be able to rest comfortably on the mouse like this. And you don't have to spend a buttload of money to get a comfortable or a good mice. This mouse right here cost me, I think like 80 bucks. They have another one that's similar. This one's from Razer. I love this one. It's called the Razer Orochi and it is symmetrical, but again, it comes out on both sides and it's very comfortable. This is a smaller mouse, so unfortunately, you cannot palm this one. You've got to claw grip this one. And just like with sensitivity, one's not better than the other when it comes to grip. It's all on preference. I love this. I was a palm gamer my entire life, this one especially. Um, but when I did utilize this mouse, I absolutely loved it. So again, I recommend just trying two or three mice, order them, return them, just test them out. Find which mouse, again, is comfortable for you. When it comes to mouse keyboard, guys, comfort is going to be everything until you start getting into skill. If you guys aren't comfortable, it's gonna be a lot harder for you guys to grind out long hour sessions and improve your gameplay. Now let's talk about gamer position. This is something that I find important. A lot of you guys might not, but again, comfort is king. So when I'm playing mouse and keyboard for me, I like to be wide armed. I have long ass arms. So of course I've got to have a wide stance. And again, I can't my keyboard, we've already discussed that. So I'm not gonna show you that. But when it comes to my mouse, now there are two different positions that I have. I have my competitive tournament mode and I have my relax I'm streaming mode. Now the relax I'm streaming mode looks something similar to this, something we've been utilizing this entire video because again, I'm not in a tournament. Let's talk about the pros. The pro is it's comfortable. Your entire arms relax, the whole thing's on the desk, you're good to go, and you can still utilize of motion the bad thing is you have a lot of drag you have a lot of things holding you back your skin is going to be sticky no matter what no matter what type of mouse pad you have it's going to be sticky granted i can't say that glass glass mouse pads not so much but eventually you know the the friction will cause some form of issue so if you guys are playing competitively if you guys are just like man i can't get the precision down i can't track smoothly i highly recommend bringing your arm off the desk you can rest it on a seat if you want but I like to have my, basically my wrist being around there. And what this does is it forces me to not be relaxed. It forces me to not only not have my arm on my desk, but lift up my palm as well, because your palm and your forearm will be creating drag, making again, some frictional issues. So when I'm playing competitively, I will have my hand off the desk and it will look something similar to this. Every little thing when it comes to mouse and keyboard between the clothes you're wearing, uh, if you guys have ever watched Myth, he used to wear a sleeve I used to wear a sleeve as well. I don't know if he still does. I don't anymore, but they're different things, different tools utilized to make it a little bit better experience. This may seem like it's a little overkill, but again, every little tip that I am giving you guys has helped me throughout my journey of mouse and keyboard. So to reiterate, competitive, relaxed. Also, lastly, you want to consider the type of play style. Claw grip is typically more suitable for fast paced games that require quick movements while palm grip is actually better for precision and control. Granted, if again, battle royales, if you're a Warzone player, you have to have both movement as well as precision and control. So 
just utilize those tools as a guide to where you want to start at. But I highly recommend, again, going back to what I said originally, trying both grips. All right, talk about mouse pad as well, guys. Um, I always prefer a big mouse pad. A lot of you guys have a smaller desk, smaller work area, so it is what it is. But if you could somehow find a way to extend your desk a little bit, maybe, I don't know, again, can't your keyboard to kind of give you more room. That's another reason why I don't set my keyboard right in front of me like I'm typing. I move it to the side and I can't it, is it gives me a lot more range of motion. But I like big mouse pads, especially since I rest my forearm from my keyboard hand on the desk itself. The mouse pad gives a nice little cushion, so it's very comfortable. But when it comes to the actual mouse usage, you don't need this much. But again, it's nice to ha not have your keyboard slide around whenever you're hitting WASD and then you have to pull it back every couple seconds. It's nice to have grip on your forearm. So basically, these two devices, your arm and your keyboard, they're locked in. If you don't have that much space to work with, it is what it is. But again, if you can squeeze a couple extra inches out, that's what she said, make sure you do so. Guys, I want to go ahead and touch on skates. Now, these little things at the bottom of the mice, a lot of people just think they're grip, slides, whatever they are. They're, they're called skates, and they come in different forms. One thing you need to look for is getting PTFE or glass skates. That's what I recommend. There are a bunch of different variants out there, but no matter what you get, make sure it has rounded edges. A lot of mice come with the pointy edges um, and it creates a lot of friction, a lot of drag and has a scratchy feeling. One thing you need to do when you buy a new mouse, put it on the mouse pad and slide it. If you feel the, the friction or the graininess while you slide it back and forth, change the skates. But I wanted to go ahead and throw this little tip in. Let's get back to it. Now, I know we went on a lot about devices and positioning, but trust me, that is key fundamentals that you guys need to master. If you just jump into straight trying to aim and you're changing all these other variables, every time you change your hand placement, your arm placement, type of keyboard you have, the cant of the keyboard, your sensitivity, every little thing that you change, will drastically throw off your entire game, your entire aim, your entire movement, everything. So you wanna make sure you start from the basics, master them all. Guys, this is crucial. If you are a mouse and keyboard player, you cannot sleep on aim training. There are two programs to use for aim training, one of which I'm gonna to use today. They have Kovac and they have Aim Labs. We'll be using Aim Labs today. Both are great. I do think Aim Labs is better for precision, but Kovac actually has some really good tracking programs also. So I kinda of use both, just depending on what I'm going for. When it comes to training, you gotta make sure to stay focused on the task. There are a few training sessions I would recommend for you guys. Grid shot, really not being one of them, but I'm going to show you this for instance. So the trick behind aim labs in general isn't to see how fast you can hit the target. It's to see how often and accurate and where you can hit the target. It's not about speed. Eventually, you can build up speed, but what you guys need to do is just start slow. Click the center of the target. Do this for 60 seconds and then do it again and then do it again. And eventually you're going to be able to speed up to where you're hitting every target fast as hell and you're going to be a better player. But again, don't get focused on these fun tasks because this is probably the most fun one they have. You want to be more focused on the miserable tasks they have. Something like line trace. Now, line trace is not the most fun thing in the world and it honestly kind of sucks. It's tedious but this will help you improve drastically, not just for snaps, but also for tracking. Um, this is actually meant for flicks, AKA snaps, but again, it really helps the track and you'll see why. So again, it's not about speed, even though you see that timer up there, it's about precision. You wanna to try to keep your mouse in that line as much as possible. Now, I haven't practiced on AIM Labs in over a month. I definitely need to. I used to practice every day for 30 minutes. But since I stepped away from being competitive, I've kind of slacked. Um, but again, you want to try your best to keep that in the line. That way you can zoom to the targets faster. And what this helps you do, do is again, if you hit, if you are, let's, let's say, okay, let's say this is where your cursor's at and all of a sudden this is the target and he pops up over there. Well, now you've got a flick there. It's gonna take you a lot longer to go like this to hit the target than it is just gonna be a perfectly straight line. See how I came off of that? Even though it didn't seem like that big of a deal, that extra little hump just took a millisecond off my time to flick. That's how you master your flicks. You want to practice this test over and over and over again. And it's not gonna be perfect, it's not gonna be pretty. And again, you wanna start small and then build up. This is a really good training program for you guys to be able to snap from enemy to enemy um, and also kind of make decisions as well. Because when you're shooting, you gotta be decisive in a lot of fights. Um, you wanna outplay the enemy, you need to figure out who you wanna focus first, and that's kinda of what this one does too. You gotta to figure out who to focus first. If you miss one, it is what it is, and it kinda of sucks, but again, it's not about speed, it's not even about being perfect, it's about building that muscle memory. That's what Aim Labs is all about. So again, tracking is not the most fun either. I actually hate tracking, but this is one of the most beneficial tools for you guys to do out there.
So when it comes to tracking, guys, again, the goal is just to track the target. It makes unpredictable moves. You're not going to be perfect, and you will get better with time. But if you guys practice this over and over and over, eventually, well, again, it'll translate to game. You'll start to be able to track your target smoother, faster. If they, you know, if they sidestep real quickly like they do in Warzone, you'll be able, again, to track that perfectly. A lot of players think that you just point and click. But when there's a lot of movement, like in Warzone, Fortnite, any other battle royale ever, you're going to want to be able to track the enemy just as efficiently as you are to snap to them. If you guys are lacking coordination, there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people are. I think most people are. You can always build that no matter what age group you are. A lot of people hit me up like, Savage, I'm 56 years old. My, my coordination's not there. Uh, my reaction time's not there. And yeah, you're always going to be behind the kids that are 18, 20 years old. But you can still be an animal. You can still be a goat just by building that muscle memory and getting those reps in. Aim training is crucial. I know a lot of you guys work long days. You don't want to sit here and practice for 30 minutes here and there. Um, and that's fine. You don't have to practice 30 minutes every day. But I definitely recommend throwing up either a custom game with bots, whether it's Valorant, whether it's Overwatch, whatever it is, throw, go, Call of Duty, go up against bots and get some reps in. Get in the multiplayer and get some reps in. Um, I encourage you to try to make at least one or two days a week where you play Aim Labs for 30 minutes. You don't have to do it forever. But if you're just getting into it, there's no shame in taking a week or two off of games to just focus on this. And then when you go play the game, you're going to be an absolute animal. So always focus, always try to hone in on your craft, whether it's a hobby, whether you're doing this for a living, whatever the case is, anybody can be a good mouse and keyboard player. It's easier to go from mouse and key to controller than it is to go from controller to mouse and key. And I don't say this as a flex. I used to be a controller player. I still kind of am. But what I'm saying is when you guys are switching from controller to mouse and key, don't get discouraged. The shit's hard. Controller's got its own hardness as well, but mouse and key's got a lot more other variables that controller players don't have to worry about so you're not going to transition over and instantly be a goat very few people can give yourself some time give yourself some practice allow yourself to get some reps and you will become a better mouse and keyboard player in a matter of weeks most mice come with side buttons you want to make sure you're utilizing these i utilize mine for pinging in warzone and push to talk just because if i remember playing with randoms i can just push to talk for prox chat but a lot of other games i would use it for grenade use it for tactical things like that this alleviates a whole two different key binds from your mouse and keyboard. Going back to the first thing we talked about, which was key binds, trying to keep it on the left side of the keyboard. There's a lot of people who struggle hitting the control, struggle hitting the, the X, the Z, shift, things like that. So if you are struggling to hit one of those, your pinky finger, and you haven't built the reps in yet, or you don't want to, utilize these extra buttons to your advantage, guys. A lot of people play on mouse and keyboard and never touch these buttons. Make sure you are using these. And if you're a Warzone player, I highly recommend ping for one of these because while you're shooting you can quickly just click that bitch and you're good to go but again guys anyone can be good at mouse and keyboard i played controller for many 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 years i played mouse and keyboard for many 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 years and i went from being a complete bot on mouse and key to being a relatively decent player myself if i can do it you guys can do it so i know a lot of you guys watching were looking for a very complicated video but in all aspect this is pretty much it it's relatively simple there's just a lot of different fundamentals you need to practice and hone in on Again, just to recap, gaming position, get the correct devices, master your DPI, master your sensitivity, meaning test it all, figure out what works for you. One mistake I don't want you to make is after you watch this video, try to do it all, right? Again, take it step by step. Go back to, go back to tip number one, do that. Tip number two, do that. Then dive into your DPI, then dive into your sensitivity. Again, DPI, I recommend 800 and work off of that. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like on the video. It's a great way to support the video and it's a great way to support the video and the channel. Also, consider subscribing yourself. But until next time, guys, y'all have a good one. And good luck at mouse and key.